Hello, my fellow deviants. My name is Paul. And my name is Alex, and welcome to eSpot. But before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon to get notified every time we post a new episode. And with that, let's get started. So I'm sure everyone's been occupied playing Gears 5 since it released just a couple days ago. And while Gears 5 already has so much in store for us, could you believe they're still throwing amazing content our way? And with how good the series is, it's no surprise that Dave Bautista is a huge fan, and he's even expressed that he really wants to be in a Gears movie, which, how cool would that be, right? That would be absolutely incredible. However, it's not a movie that we'll be getting. On September 3rd, Dave Bautista tweeted out, it's about damn time, complete with a 21 second video of him in COG armor. Come September 15th, you'll be able to stomp some swarm as the animal Batista in Gears 5, and he'll even be complete with his signature Hollywood shades. Batista's appearance is part of a partnership between Xbox and WWE that will culminate in the Clash of the Champions on the WWE Network on September 15th. And all you have to do to unlock him is to play the game after the 15th, then he'll be a playable character in multiplayer mode. But don't forget, you'll only have until October 28th to unlock Batista. Earlier in the year, we learned that Lucasfilm are officially developing Star Wars movies based on Knights of the Old Republic. Lucasfilm is looking to Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings series for inspiration. A three hour runtime? No. <laughs> Even better. They want to have huge battles involving lightsaber wielding combatants in the new films. There is some skepticism since we got to see what large, large scale lightsaber battle looked like in the Attack of the Clone Wars series but some didn't think it was too great. But who knows, I'm sure Lucasfilm has a plan, and quite frankly, I can't wait to see some large-scale lightsaber battle to happen. So Disney's been big with live remakes lately, with the recent release of the live-action Lion King and Aladdin, and it's seeming they're not going to be stopping there. With rumors of a live-action Hercules, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and Pocahontas. Well, there's another one to add to the plate, Atlantis the Lost Empire and to increase your excitement Tom Holland will be playing the lead We're all familiar with the Netflix and their binge culture releasing one season at a time with not really giving us any warning about it Well, Disney's taking on a whole different route with their new streaming service Disney Plus It was announced at D23 that the new streaming service will be a weekly schedule and it's a way to try and keep subscribers hooked instead of the usual one and done or at least until the next season is released. Smart move by Disney. So Spotify is reintroducing a way to share music through Facebook Stories. Mm -hmm. The new Facebook Story integration includes 15 second song previews for viewers. You can tap the play on Spotify button in the story to open up the Spotify app. It's designed with artists and their teams in mind. You won't be able to share playlists yet, only individual songs but it's still a very cool feature. Kanye West's Sunday service covers Travis Scott and Drake's song Sicko Mode. The 2018 track is thought to be a diss at Kanye and the Kardashian clan. So what do they do in retaliation? They made a holy rendition of the song, of course. So Santana's debut album turns 50. 1969 was a pivotal year for music, with Aretha, Aretha Franklin's Soul 69 both Led Zeppelin's self-titled debut and Led Zeppelin 2, plus many, many others. But among those was Santana's self-titled debut release just a week after Woodstock. It had a profound impact on both, both musically and social, social, socially. Santana's cultural mashup made a statement about Latin music that still reverberates to this day. Most serious raiding guilds use voice chat to bark orders or refine strategy between wipes, but the guild, undaunted, is proven they're not impossible clearing the Emerald Nightmare on the highest difficulty, the first major raid in the Legion cycle. But how did they do it? I can help with that one. Joseph Antle, Undaunted's guild master, guild master, gave a little insight on how the Death Guild raids. He says setting up assignments before raid encounters is what they always do especially the order of healing cooldowns. And if a tank forgot how to, or forgot to taunt a boss to deal with the debuffs, the other tank would quickly type in taunt as a reminder. 
It's easy to see why undaunted Raiders enjoy the satisfaction of su succeeding against the odds. Being able to come together and still enjoy a game is, is success in itself. The future of video games is soon becoming present with beautiful graphics that could be deemed so close to realistic. And Control is a prime example. Unfortunately, that comes with a cost. But it's nice to know that playing the game on a high-end PC is a showpiece for the next generation of video game visu visuals. Shadows and reflections just bounce off each other, and it's all thanks to ray tracing, a method of generating an image with a computer by tracing the path of light from an imaginary eye or camera to the objects in that image. And it's really taking the visuals of video game to the whole new level. The Outer Worlds latest trailer touts all the animities of dystopia. The trailer is a form The trailer is from Pax West 2019 and is the context of recruitment ad for low to no standards Halcyon Colony. We're also exposed to the combat styles and character types, plus concepts such as robophobia. We can all experience this ourselves October 25th. So we do hope you enjoyed this episode of eSpot. And also don't forget to check out the other amazing content on the DVSI channel and website. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember, stay, stay devious. devious.